Hi everyone, Christina here. Welcome to another card video. Today I'm going to be exploring using digital stamps with watercolor. In the past with digital stamps, I've only ever used Copics because I can print them out and directly go to coloring. But for today, I'm using these images from the Greeting Farm. These are brand new images, they're adorable, and I really wanted to watercolor them. So I printed them out and I'm going to show you two different methods to get these printed images onto watercolor paper. Now if you have a printer that has waterproof ink and it can handle watercolor paper, you are so lucky because I don't have a printer like that. So I'm going to show you how to get around that because if I tried to watercolor these printed images that came straight out of my printer, I would have a big mess. So this first method I'm using is with a light pad. You could also hold up these images to uh, an open window with lots of sunlight streaming through and maybe you've got the lights off in your room. What you want is to put the printed image on the bottom and then put your watercolor paper on top. Kind of tape them together or you know directly to the surface like I've done here so that they don't move. And then you can very lightly trace the printed images with a pencil. So I'm going over each one of these images and as you probably saw when I showed you the initial images, um, they do arrange together they are arranged together in a scene, but I wanted to adhere these to my card separately and put foam adhesive in between them. So that's why I'm, I'm using them individually. This second image, I actually put it all together as a whole scene and kept it all as one. I'm going to be painting it all together and then just adhering it as one piece. Now this is another method. I'm using some graphite paper or transfer paper, and I'm turning that over so that the graphite is touching the surface of my watercolor paper. I've taped everything in place, and now I'm tracing with the pencil again, but this time I'm tracing directly on top of that printed piece. And what this is doing is it's pressing that graphite paper into the watercolor paper and transferring just a little bit of graphite onto the surface of my watercolor paper. Now for some areas this worked well, other areas not so much. It was very, very faint. So I ended up going over each of these lines with my pencil anyway. So I think in the long run, my preferred method is to use a light pad or um, like, you know, put it up to a window or something like that. If you don't have transfer paper, you could also scribble on the back of that printed piece with a pencil and then just, you know, you could do the same thing and it would transfer the, the, the graphite from your pencil that's in the back of the sheet to the watercolor paper. So this image that I'm working on today is actually going to go on a card that I'm giving to someone who we are in the middle of watching Picard together. And if you have not watched Picard on CBS um, All Access, it is completely worth the subscription price. I think it's so well done, and I'm not a big Star Trek fan myself, but my older brother is, and so I know just enough about the backstory of Star Trek to really appreciate this. And, um, and even if you don't know anything about Picard, it's still a really good show. So I want it to look like the, um, the two people in the scene are watching the show. And so I wanted to put the logo on screen. So I looked it up on my phone and I very roughly drew the logo on this television that's uh, the, the image from the digital stamp set. So I'm putting some drying gum on so it can keep the letters white and then I'll be painting over the top. Now, when you're using drawing gum, you want to make sure that it's completely dry before you start painting over the top. So I actually set this aside for a little bit of time, let it dry completely, and then I moved on with my project. So the paints I'm using today are actually inks. They are Tim Holtz Distress inks. I just smushed the mini ink pads onto a slick surface. This is an Art Impressions palette over on the side. And then I'm bringing those colors in and painting. 
So this is actually a really, really easy process doing this little wash back here. And I'm really happy with how it turned out, especially because on the original image with the logo, it's showing um, a field and you can, there's a horizon line and things like that. And, but it's overall very yellow, orange, and brown. And um, I'm kind of making this very abstract because most of it you won't even see because the, the two people on the couch will be in front of it. But I think it resembles that uh, logo, that kind of like photo logo that CBS has been using for all the promo materials. I think it looks just similar enough to be, to be pretty cool. So now I'm going to go on and paint the couch as well as the two people on it. And I want this to look like my couch at my house, which is a very neutral shade. So I started with pumice stone and then went over the top with walnut stain. And that kind of just toned it just enough um, that it looks a similar to the color of my couch. When it comes to painting the hair on both of these characters, um, I kind of really struggled because it has been such a long time since I have watercolored people and watercolored these kind of like cartoon characters with all this hair. With Copics, it's easy. Like it's no problem. I've done that so many times over the years, but watercoloring is another beast and it took me a little bit of time to kind of get into the groove. And by the time I get to the second card for today's video, I will figure that out. But for now, you're going to kind of see me struggle through the painting of the hair, uh, mostly on um, the, the one on the right with her hair in a bun, because I wanted it to look um, like dark hair, but not so super dark. I wanted there to be some lighter areas too. And so I kind of really struggled trying to get this to work, especially because I was adding so much detail to it that I was trying to fill in the gaps between what was on the original image and where the hair was going, where I was painting. The other um, person on the left, that one came together a little bit uh, more easily, and I wish I would have done the same style on the girl, but um, she had that bun, and I wanted to make that more detailed. So I ended up just going over and adding more and more color until eventually it was super dark. Um, not my favorite, but I still think it looks pretty good. I ended up having to add black um, to darken up those shadows because otherwise it was just a big brown blob. But um, all in all, I think as they say, you're your own worst critic. And I think um, like watching this as I'm editing the video, I'm like, oh, that doesn't look so good. But when I look at the final images on the card, I don't mind it. So I think, you know, this is a lesson that I keep learning over and over and over, which is if you don't like how it looks, walk away for a bit, come back, and it's probably not as bad as you thought it was. I'm removing the drawing gum and it's revealing that white uh, watercolor paper underneath. And then I trimmed out these three images. I think I forgot to mention I'm using Arches watercolor paper today. So it's pretty thick. This was um, one of the more difficult papers to cut out. There's also some greetings in that digital stamp set and I put one on some white cardstock and printed it on my printer, cut it down to be exactly five by seven and then adhered that to the front of a five by seven card base. And I planned it just so it's positioned perfectly to put these images right above. Put some foam adhesive on the back of that television just using that finished scene as a guide for where to place it. And then I'm going to put foam adhesive on the back of the people on the couch, as well as foam adhesive on the back of the little side table with the bowl of popcorn. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a white gel pen and just add some highlights onto that popcorn because as I was painting it, it lost all areas of white. So I wanted to just add that back in and then this card is finished. You'll see that at the end of the video, but for now I'm gonna move on to my second image. And I'm just going to turn on some music and let you guys watch the painting. Um, this image goes rather quickly. I am painting it to look like me sitting on a couch. I do not have a blue couch. You'll see me paint this blue here in a minute. Kinda of wish I did, because it's a nice blue. But I did paint the cat to look like one of my cats. And if 
any of you in real life, like people I know in real life are watching this, you probably know which cat that is. And that would be Daphne because Daphne is the cat that just wants to be up in everyone's business. <laughs> she wants to be in the middle of the action at all times. And so of course, if I'm on my laptop on the couch, Daphne is right there. All right. So I'm going to turn on some music and let you guys watch the painting. I'll be back when I finish. Okay, all of that painting is complete. I took my scissors and I trimmed this one out and instead of cutting right up onto the line, I left a little bit of um, a margin around that image and mostly because the wires on the headphones or on the earbuds were away from the actual area of the image and I didn't wanna to have to worry about cutting up against those wires. I'm now using some sentiment st strips or reverse sentiment strips from CZ Design and Simon Says Stamp. And this one right here was perfect for this image. It says, let's Skype soon. So I put some foam adhesive on the back of my painted image and then adhered it to the front of a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card base made out of some Nina Environmental Desert Storm cardstock. I adhered that greeting on the very bottom. And then here are both of the cards all finished. These were so fun to watercolor. We hope you'll check out these digital images over at the greeting farm. They have so many images that they've added recently that are very um, just perfect for the current times we're in. Um, they specifically have ones with the characters wearing masks and you know living their best quarantine life at home. So there's a lot of different uh, options if you want to do some really relevant and timely cards. Thanks for watching today. I will see you guys in another video very soon. <laughs>